Chapter 1. The New Girl What'd you say her name was again? Fiona. Fiona Pickleberry Bush. Pickleberry Bush? Twelve-year-old Matt Taylor pushed back his trademark Edmonton Oilers cap and grinned at his older brother, Chad. Then he turned back to the boy they had pulled aside on Milligan Creek's Main Street. It was practically deserted, shimmering heat waves rising from the asphalt on the hot mid-July day. The boy, Sheldon Narfison, was dressed in neon green swim trunks and a t-shirt, a rainbow-striped beach towel slung over his shoulder. He looked around nervously, as if eager to get on his way. I don't know what kind of a name it is, he replied, jingling some loose change in his hand. But you should see her, he smiled dreamily. Every guy in town is nuts for her. That's why we're all down at the pool. She's been there every day since she showed up, and here's the crazy thing. He leaned in close, as if sharing an important secret. She never goes in the water. Why not? Matt asked. Sheldon shrugged as he hurried down the street. Why don't you ask her yourself? Matt shook his head as he watched Sheldon round the corner toward the pool. Then he turned back to Chad. Can you believe that? Look at this place. It's a ghost town. And all because of a girl? Chad scanned the nearly empty street, which would normally be teeming with kids heading to the arcade, buying ice cream, or just hanging out. All he saw were a few senior citizens sitting on the bench outside the Milligan Creek Co-op, whiling away the afternoon as they swapped stories in the shade. Above them, on the side of the store, was a billboard advertising Milligan Creek Days, the community's upcoming annual summer festival, which included a rodeo, a midway, a parade, a softball tournament, and other activities, the most anticipated of which was the crowning of Miss Milligan Creek. Chad turned back to his brother. She must be pretty special to get everyone so riled up. Maybe we should head down to the pool and see what all the fuss is about. Matt scoffed. Are you kidding me? Go stare at a girl who won't even go in the water? She probably just doesn't want to get her hair wet. Let's stop by Dean's house instead. He's one guy who I can guarantee hasn't fallen under Pickleberry Bush's spell. He's probably been sitting in the lawn chair at the end of our driveway for the last two weeks, waiting for Joyce to get home. Joyce was Matt and Chad's older sister. Dean Muller, one of their best friends, had been in love with her for as long as they could remember. Matt and Chad's family had just returned from a road trip to Vancouver. They left on the last day of school and took their time camping to and from the coast, finally arriving home in mid-July. As much as the boys liked the ocean, they had been restless throughout much of the trip. The mountains made them feel claustrophobic, and they were only able to relax once they finally descended from the foothills back onto the prairies. Matt started down the street and then stopped and looked back when he realized Chad was still standing on the corner, gazing longingly toward the pool. Aren't you coming? Matt asked. Chad cast a final glance toward the pool and then turned reluctantly to follow his brother. I guess so. Sheesh, Matt said as Chad caught up to him. I was starting to think Miss Pickleberry Bush was already getting to your brain, too. Five minutes later, Matt's knuckles rapped on a screen door as he and Chad stood on the front porch of Dean's two-story home. Chad swept his hair out of his eyes as they waited for someone to answer his bangs already sticking to his forehead in the summer heat. Girl or no girl, hanging out at the pool's not such a bad idea on a day like today. Yeah, maybe, Matt said. But I've got all sorts of other plans for the summer, and we've already lost two weeks to... Oh, hi, Mrs. Muller, Matt said as he saw her silhouette appear inside. Mrs. Muller pushed open the screen door and fanned herself with a newspaper as she looked Matt up and down. Well, well, well. Matt Taylor. Back already, hey? I was hoping you'd be out of my hair for at least half the summer. Now not only do I have to put up with this heat, I have to put up with you too. Hello, Chad. Chad grinned. Hello, Mrs. Muller. Is Dean around? She sniffed. You mean you guys haven't heard? About little Miss Pickleberry Bush? Matt's jaw dropped. Not Dean too. She nodded. Yup, even Andrew's caught the bug. Andrew? 
Matt and Chad exchanged surprised looks. Andrew Lowen was the brains of the bunch, and, to the boys' knowledge, he had yet to show interest in anything other than technology and inventions. Never mind girls. You should see them all, Mrs. Muller continued. Jumping off the diving boards, doing push-ups on the pool deck, competing to see who can swim the farthest underwater. Anything they can think of to impress her. The funny thing is, she doesn't bat an eye. Just lies there on her beach towel. Sunglasses on and headphones over her ears. Probably loving every minute of it. Matt sighed. This is depressing. Tell me about it, Mrs. Muller said, wiping her forehead. I haven't been able to get Dean to cut the lawn for a week. Not that I blame him in this heat. Matt turned to leave. Well, thanks anyway, Mrs. Muller. No problem, boys. If you do see Dean, make sure you tell him. No grass, no cash. And watch out, or Miss Pickleberry Bush will cast her spell on you too. She laughed as she let the screen door slam shut. Not a chance, Matt retorted as he and Chad headed down the sidewalk. Chad didn't look nearly as sure. Well, what are we going to do for the rest of the day? Chad asked a few minutes later as the brothers made their way back downtown. I don't know, Matt replied, kicking a rock into the gutter. Maybe head to the arcade? At least it's air-conditioned, and with Miss Pickleberry Bush in town, there won't be a lineup at any of the good games. I don't know, Chad said squinting as he watched two men in an articulating hydraulic boom lift repainting the town's water tower, which loomed over Milligan Creek like a bright white lollipop. The bulb at the top of the tower had the town's name printed on it in big black letters. Seems a waste to spend such a beautiful day inside. What else do you suggest? The boys stopped where their bikes were parked outside the convenience store on Main Street, and Chad looked longingly toward the pool. Matt smacked himself in the forehead. Oh, no. Not my own brother. Chad turned back to him. Come on, Matt. Aren't you even a little curious? No. Well, I am. He grabbed his bike out of the rack and got on. So that's it, Matt asked. You're abandoning me. Chad looked back over his shoulder as he pedaled away. No one's stopping you. Besides... One little look couldn't hurt. Oh yeah? Tell that to all the people who looked at Medusa. They turned to stone. Fiona's not Medusa, Chad called over his shoulder. How do you know? Matt replied, kicking another stone into the gutter. She's probably worse. <laughs>